Good morning. Good morning, everybody. This is Mia. And since I don't know how much time I have, I figured I'd go ahead and start the recording and then I'll put you up on this um, stand so I'm not looking down at the camera. This is Tuesday morning already. It just feels like it was just last Tuesday. So I want to do a pondering question. Ah, this thing is, why is this thing stuck? I want to do a pondering question. Why is it that when we pay for television, which I personally haven't really done, my parents did and my partner does, but I haven't paid the rest of my adult life, unless it was included in the college dorm. Why is it that we pay for television and we, um, I can't lose this cord, by the way. We, um, Oh, okay. Why is it that we pay for television and we still got so many commercials? So many commercials. I still stand here because there's a pillow and it. there's no way to really prop you all up unless you're like this. So there's the grapefruit that I opened last week. So it's starting to turn a seal on itself. And it's my, my partner. Thank you to him for cleaning my cup or my bowl and my special spoon that is not that sharp anymore because I keep using it. I was using it in like a ceramic dish as a regular spoon. I don't know why. Mmm, there's juice. Let's see if it's still any good. I mean, as in like not rotten because it's been sitting in the fridge. I'm going to clean out the fridge. I got a onion that's growing. Kept cutting it and kept growing, kept cutting and kept growing. And it was still like a cuttable onion, as in like still plump and wet. Plump wet onions. Now, it has shriveled up because it's growing the green inside the fridge. And it's pointing all in the same direction. Uh, I'm wondering if there's, like, our refrigerator is really old and really bad. Hmm, it's got like too much pulp. I don't know what that was. I'm wondering if there's a crack. Either the A, the light stays on, or B, if there's light coming in, because the seal is all... I don't even like to touch this refrigerator, but my food is in there. When we had to clean everything before we moved in, nothing was clean. It was empty, except for that giant cockroach that was over there. Oh my gosh, and that bite baseboard was broken off. Besides that... So I think they left, they left a little bit of this table um, shelf liner with holes in it, like the mushy kind, that plastic mush. There's a full of turds, mouse turds, and there was holes in the pantry. Like, what are the mouse just coming down here, eating their food, whoever lived here before, and then crawling down and going out the back door because there's huge holes, like, that we have stuffed with to uh, tissue or paper towels. I feel like we should have it stuffed with steel wool. I don't have any at this moment. It's us put an old SOS in there. I don't think we have any of that. I thought I bought some. I bought it from the other place. Why do we pay for commercials? Why do we pay to get the YouTube TV? And I don't have cable. Why do people pay? And then I just want to turn down the Naked and Afraid that I was watching last night and you can see the strip on the bottom with all the yellow for the commercials that are like what's the point and I my EHR used to be free and you're supposed to have it free for up to a certain amount per month and then they they said once free always free and then they sold out to another company and then they increased the price to $149 um, even for a small clinic, it doesn't matter if you have 10,000 patients or three, zero or three patients. And they should have definitely have it tiered. That's good if you have a lot of patients. So just get more patients, I guess. Um, actually get paid for them. They said they were going to take data, unidentified, de-identified data from our charts. And they were going to put out commercials as a way to offset the cost. They still have those in place. And they still charge. So what a lie. I'm paying for commercials that take up so much of my screen and my EHR that I can't even see the screen. 
Not even, that's on the laptop. That's not even speaking of trying to do it on an iPad mini. I don't even get my start. I'm not even going to try it on my phone. Because it's like it takes up the whole screen. Like up dots and or whatever. And this and this. And billing solutions. And, you know, I don't care. If I express any interest in that, your phone is ringing 30 seconds later. Because somebody done tracked your... Whatever. It's like someone can't send a friendly email saying here or a link to your website. Why do companies do that? Oh, you want more information? Get a quote. Like, it's not some kind of digital quote. It's like someone's going to call and harass you. I was going to sign up for something. It was semi important. And they called three times. Was it a bank account or something? I don't know. It's like. I don't remember what it was because I'm traumatized. They were calling and emailing all hours of the day and night. Sundays, my dude, really, There's some lady, very aggressive cells. I said, don't contact me anymore, and I blocked them, and I'm like, oh my god, I can't remember what it was, but it was something that I need for my company, and I don't know if this was, like, the only source, I don't even know, but I was like, I cannot handle that, and I don't like to block, because I don't know if, if anyone has, you know, like, an individual maybe could use their number, but it says it's coming from the company. It's like, it's like a, someone has a personal cubicle phone number, they call, and it doesn't show up as that direct number, but it shows up as their company's number. So I didn't want to, like, block, but I did. I should, I should get back to you and let you know. This is too much of the skin. Hold on, let me pause it. Let's talk about weight gain, rapid weight gain. I got these clothes last summer, and I got this huge size. I didn't try it on. I didn't. They seem to be, like, fitted. Look at my arm. This is where I was concerned, my fat arms. They seem to be fitted for juniors. So I got, like, extra extra large or whatever size. It's a koi, but it's, like, the dog one, the French dog. I don't know what it is. My friend had some koi scrubs, and they didn't look like this. They look like regular shirts. I don't know why this one. I thought they had, like, fitted in the waistband. I don't know why. I couldn't find those kind of scrub tops that actually look like blouses, but whatever. I'm just, I was going to wear this to an event. I think I'll wear it tomorrow to an event. Um, it's like you go from a regular size, like size 14, then you jump to 16 and 18, and then it goes from being like, hey, this is like kind of a fitted top. To just like, okay, we're gonna put a, a tent, we're just gonna like make it like big to their parameters, they're not gonna make it too big because they're gonna have to pay for all that fabric. It looks like around May, I don't know, before or after May of this year, I was in the 170s, 175, 177. In June, my weight ballooned up until 195. So, like, in a month, it was a 20-pound weight gain. I was eating, I wasn't necessarily eating a lot of grapefruit, but I was drinking some juices that had grapefruit. And the pre bait I was drinking some, or eating plenty of oranges, like the little ones, one or two oranges, for, like, a meal or snack. Like, one or two a day. And if I was ever out in public or something all day in a class, I might bring three oranges with me, because that would be pretty, like... That would be all I eat all day, maybe like something with a little bit of protein. I eat some raw tomato sauce that I made with um, soaked sun-dried tomatoes with a uh, fresh tomato, like aroma, and some garlic, onion, and then I made a zucchini noodle with the spiraler, and then I made, I had some nuts soaking for two, three days, which that was kind of too long for some cashews, so I made like a cheese with that, with... I think I had garlic and cashew, and I don't know. I think I put a little olive oil on each of those things. And I had used the Bragg um, liquid aminos, which is salty, and I had too much bowel movement, and, like, I was sick. And I weighed myself at 189 this morning. And I've been eating salads and carrots. I ate two carrots, baby carrots, yesterday. Before I went to bed, I, the part of the tomato I cut off, I bit, and I had, let me show you a picture of the pasta, 
I had, I, don't have, I didn't have any watermelon yesterday. I didn't take, I had to go out of town. I didn't take any extra food with me. I didn't buy food for the first time. We didn't have time, first of all. I didn't have money in the place. I've been getting sick and uh, it's just bad. So I had a bag from my trip, my airplane snack, which was some nuts, raisins, and uh, one of the, um, I had a couple of this coconut candy, or cookies, raw cookies, Hillary's, I don't remember what brand, and those were mixed in with some pumpkin seeds. I think that the pumpkin seeds might have had salt, so I likely got regular salt yesterday, and I had eaten the, I've been nibbling on this since June, or the, the beginning of July, and taking it in the car, and I ate a, quite a bit of it yesterday. Oh yeah, and then I ate these grapes that are making me, I'm starting to get gross, these, I'm going to turn them into juice, these Concord grapes are not like the ones that I was getting at the health food store, New Seasons, I don't even know if the other ones were um, organic, let's get you the picture, so I have this, um, so I made the noodles, I made the pasta sauce, the red, and I put some fresh basil in the sauce, and I made this cheese, and fake cheese, so all this is raw vegan, it's not vegan, I forgot, because I did put honey in the sauce, I did put honey in the sauce, I have some raw garlic, I don't know how to use it, um, I have some though, I'm trying to transition. And then I have fresh base, so I got the Amish market. So that's, that was my dinner. Here's a close-up. So yeah, not almost vegan, so it's plant-based. Soaked cashews. Raw tomato sauce. It's all raw. The cashews, people try to think, these aren't raw. My cashews growing sprouts. They're inside... I have a class today. Oh, do I have a class today? At 12? No, it's. So I have a class today. I missed yesterday's class. Oops. I wonder if I can do the um, recording. I had a dream. I wrote it and I forgot about it. I had a dream that I had a. Um, 2 o'clock, I have a class. That I had uh, gone to some festival. Everyone was going to some Madonna festivals. Oh my god, did she die? So I'm an awesome dream about who's the last person that died? I, I had a dream about them. I I was watching their movie, something oh it was uh Paul Herman's is that his name Paul. I was like looking him up. And he died on that Sunday, I think. I was looking him up and stumbled up on a whole bunch of stuff and then the next thing I saw was that he had died like the next day. I was like it, it was like random. It was like been years and I was just like, oh, something's, something's going on, like, I, I'm wondering what happened with all those allegations, and this acting career, and I was trying to, like, just research, I had my hair up in a ponytail, well, I need to wash my hair, I had my hair up in a ponytail holder for, like, two, three days, look, I have no edges, it's just short, my hair is super thick, by the way, my hair is thick, it just doesn't grow, and most of it is just attached to my scalp, like this, so rapid weight gain, I'm exercising, I'm doing dance, I'm walking. It sucks to look at your phone, especially with being disabled or injured from this, uh, physical injuries from this, uh, from the car accident and from the fall. It's sad. Trying to walk, exercise, drink a lot of water, the straight water, and just to see the weight coming up. 10 15 pounds in a month. Some of these times, I really, guys, I really ate some raw food restaurant food that was over salty or some raw food takeout, mail order stuff. It's really salty, you know. And you think you're on a restaurant, you're on a holiday weekend, you might bump your weight up with some salt, uh, sodium bloating, couple, even five pounds, even six pounds. Not overeating, just eating it, eating the fruit, drinking the water, eating the celery, playing, there's no hummus, there's nothing. And 
a few nuts who don't pass out from not having any protein at all. And then it's sad to not see the weight go back down. That's the thing. I don't even have on my calendar when my weight was in the 190s, which I should have. And I, I might add something in there just to have it in there. I, think I have a doctor's appointment, so I can I can add that to it from the last time I went in for my doctor's appointment. It was, it must have been in July, yeah, a couple weeks, a few weeks ago. I make sure to add that so I can take note of the gain and loss. And the last time I cut out salt and kept this other sodium, I lost like 10 pounds. But if I'm in at 189 and I was like 195 or 193, then maybe I lost a couple pounds from that. But it is I've been sweating and working and traveling and like I said I'm out of money so I'm not buying food I used to buy food from Vitacost I used to go down to Whole Foods and buy food when whenever I run out of money and food my weight goes up my partner's like if you don't have food your mind is like hoarding and it's not that I'm starving it's just that I, what I have I told you the class if this is the only food that I have then I better you know preserve it, or I'm thinking about it, or they don't let it go bad, but you gotta ration it, like, so I, my body is like, hey, you, you're not gonna be able to replace that when it's gone, put it in the freezer, make raisins out of it, do this, do that, make juice and freeze that, like, all these different things are going through my mind, and in response, my body is just, like, packing on, like, even my, my belly, like, I feel like this shirt is, can't see, I feel like it's about, just in the front itself, it's about this much, okay, this butt's too big, was that, like, seven, eight inches, it's these arms, <laughs> third part of this video, single divorced parent goes to medical school with history of homelessness, I wanted to recap on the reason I made this channel was because I was a single divorced parent, I say single divorce because people assume because I'm black that I was just having babies any which way. But I was married to the same man for 10 years. He was also the father of my children. He We left when they were toddlers, so they were quite young. He paid zero in child support. The child support was tried to be enforced because um, I went to a shelter. And they domestic violence shelter, they required that you had to apply for services, including welfare and Medicaid and... Uh, food stamps. So those three services, you had to work with the D Department of Human Services in Portland, Oregon. If you did not, you got evicted. You had to do what they say. You can't say, oh, well, I'm working. Oh, well. I mean, if you're working, I was working to count your income. They told me to quit my job. So people could say, oh, these lazy people look, sit around watch TV. No, I was sitting around watch TV. I was in treatment. I was going to meetings. I got written up because I went to meetings. I went to a meeting. <laughs> I was a newly recovering person. Almost got written up for having soap in a Chinese food container at the store. That's how the store gave it. Like, oh, you're written up. This lady, this black security woman, she was trying any, anything she could to write me up. And then I'm sitting here before, right before that, I just dropped out of my term at Portland State University to pursue a change in my life in 20, uh, 2004, I believe. And... I didn't know that how much of a change it was going to be, but I knew in my heart something was right and the higher power was leading me. And I was already pursuing my doctoral, my medical doctorate, which started out for me into naturopathic doctorate degree and license. That's how I succeeded at. 2004. I became ham homeless again with kids. Not the first time with kids, and not the first time without kids. Partner didn't pay a penny. Raised my kids till 18 by myself. In severe poverty. I'm an African American woman. I've got disabilities. <clears throat> Having my hair in a ponytail makes it look a little bit normal because it's got a little bit of curl to it. But no normally, my hair, like you see, it's always sticking up and crazy. People don't want to hire me. They don't trust me. I was wearing all these clothes that were too small, driving raggedy cars. Couldn't wash my clothes. People were like, you got stains on your clothes. You stink. Your deodorant's not working. Who wants to hire someone like that? I didn't have the resources. We didn't have money for deodorant. When you go, when you're homeless, they don't give you stuff for the parents. If you're a parent, um, 
if you're homeless and you're single, maybe they give you toiletries. I mean, I've donated socks and stuff. They don't give us. Anytime I went to a thing, it was always the kids got stuff. I didn't get deodorant. I didn't get shampoo. I didn't have soap. I didn't have the money because when I was homeless, some of the time I was homeless, I had to pay rent. So technically, you have a roof on your head. You're not sleeping on the side. You're not sleeping in a tent. You had to pay rent to live there. And they're going to take 90% and tell you that you have to get your electricity in your name. All your utilities, heat, electricity, if you need it, some kind of phone. So I had to do all that and work and be on welfare. And my friend taught me the trick of pull the money out of the couch. Any change from people sitting in there. They change under the car seat. And that's how you pay for gas. 45 cents of gas, please. And I'm sitting there. It's automated. Or automated. It's somebody did the gas for you. And I'm sitting there watching them. Don't keep the cap off too long, guys. I don't want to lose my fumes. This friend had gone back to school studying criminal justice. And we were living in a, one of the shelters that we had to pay. If someone had zero income, they probably wouldn't have to pay. A lot of people in that situation could be have their social workers say they're disabled. One of my social workers, bless her, she was actually fair, said that I so qualified to be on disability due to the circumstances. Just let her know, she'll write the letter. Turn that in, disability, SSI, disability. I said no. In my mind, I said, I'm going to work. I'm going to be a doctor. And you see me being a doctor and struggling. And I kick myself. My friend was on disability. She wasn't allowed to do anything. She was supposed to sit in her house and do nothing. She had a kid. She was having disability, child support. Someone with a good income. She had a nice duplex she was living in. But she wanted to volunteer at the church. I'm not saying any names. She said, I'm not allowed to volunteer at the church. They expect you to stay at home with your disability and become more disabled. She had a progressive disease. So it's easy to see that it would be hard to work when you're under these conditions. But they say, you know, they're going to say, oh, if you could volunteer, you can work. But if you're going to volunteer two, four, zero to eight hours a week, that's not the same as working. So they, they should have some kind of thing where if you can, if you can even get a job. Some jobs say you can't, you can't have a disability. It's not, it's not judging. It's like you have to be able to see color. If you're colorblind, you need to be able to see color for the certain machines that have a thing that could be life threatening or could be food related or you might need a job where you have to be able to walk around and write or walk near the water and or hear things or hear or speaker somebody say everybody stand clear you know so there there's different things i mean they could do accommodations but they're not trying to judge you they're saying this is a requirement you require to walk up steep terrain you know prior to drive for their job. So I saw her not being able to allow it to go volunteer. Or sit at home and just be with your life. What are you going to do all day? And so I said, I'm not going to be like her and, and be itching to go sit in the kids' school for, you know, a camping trip or something, be a chaperone. I'm not going to get penalized because I wanted to be part of my kids' life. You know? So I went back to, uh, I was already at Portland State, I had already gone to Michigan State. I had to fix my Michigan State because it doesn't show on my student aid.gov that I graduated, and I did. I need to go back and um, think about um, Portland State. I didn't get a degree because my advisor was a jerk and did not even care about my case. So I missed out on my, um, to be a alum, alum, alumni, alumni of Portland State because of 12 credits, which I actually ran out of funding for anyways. Um, uh, I'm sure I could have transferred the credits from my other school. Because I, I don't even know if they had the credits from the community college classes. I mean, that's basically three, four credit classes or four, three credit classes. I'm sure that I could have added some of the stuff that I had done. I, I almost want to go back and say, hey... I wanted to, um, I was supposed to be getting a degree, and my advisor dropped the ball, and by the time I got the letter, I had, I had not gotten direction, and I had gotten, um, I'm gonna write a letter and say, hey, I have classes 
that I could have had from the uh, Alpena Community College back in 1990-something. It would have still counted, maybe, maybe not have, since they had that rule. I had this transcript from Michigan State where to get uh, a parallel degree. My dad's like, don't waste time trying to get a parallel degree. That's stupid. But I wish I had, and I wish I was on one Not just a tender for five, six years. I paid a lot of money and a lot of debt for attending that school and not being alumni. I was homeless. I was living in some central city concern housing programs is paying rent. They don't fix stuff, they break stuff, they mess up stuff. They're gonna require the maintenance come and look at something and breaks it even worse. When they say, I'm not, I don't have money, we don't have money to replace it, too bad. So I'm going into Fred Meyer with student loan money that I still have to pay back to buy parts for my toilet. Cause how am I gonna live in an apartment with three people, with two me and two little kids with no working toilet, no flushable toilet? Because the maintenance man broke it and won't fix it. After he broke it the first time, made a maintenance request. What's he gonna do the second time? Rip it out of the floor and throw it out the second story window? Come on, these people were jerks. Came leaving my electricity on, using electricity for project, like stealing stuff. Like, oh, it's sick, it's sick, it's sick. I hate this for people. People could say, oh, at least you had a home. Yeah, I understand. There's there's a reason some people will not go into shelter systems. Because it's just, the rules are strict. There's curfews. You can't have visitors. You have to do what they say. They evict you. They're going to watch you like a hawk when you have kids. Trying to find any reason to write you up or send you to child welfare. There's a lot of people that, mainly they were white people. They were sitting at home all day watching TV, using drugs. Eating fast food, getting all this money from myself and my kid's disability, child support, welfare. You do, if you do welfare, TANF, you're going to have TANF accept your child support, and then TANF will distribute only, like, if, it, if it's $400 and the partner's giving you $700, they are going to keep the extra. <laughs> they're only going to give you the four, they're not going to give you the remainder. And then you're going to have the child support, the welfare system is going to demand that you get proof that the kids' parent does or doesn't have insurance, health insurance, that could be used for those children. The nightmare. And then with Medicaid, certain things that they're going to want to pay with your your money when you die. They're going to use your state to get recoup some costs of some services, and who knows? I'm scared to death. I'm scared to death. I'm scared to death. Um... So let's talk about the academics. And I know how I know I don't have much time. Let me try. Parking there because the parking lot's already filling up. Academics: a single parent, single divorced parent, no money, no child support, living off student loans. Student loan. When you get a student loan, it's designed for you. You can share a house with another, or share an apartment, or a dorm room with other people. Eat cheap. Get a bus pass for one person. When you're a single parent, there's three of you. You got three. You need a home for three. You need a car, vehicle, whatever. Bus passes for three. Food for three. Clothing for three. School supplies for three. People don't help. There's a church in Portland that puts on the back to school program. They help my neighbors to Somali. They help the people that were from the Middle East. They didn't help us. We went, shoot, shoot up, showed up, got our number. They didn't help us. Everyone else even got offered. Like, oh, would you like a seat? Oh, would you like a water? Does your kid want a book to read? They could keep the book. I shot with my kids. They just look at me. I know what they're thinking. The N-word. They're thinking of these other people. A lot of those other people that they're catering to you say, oh, they're really religious with their hair coverings. Those kids drove me crazy. My, my blood pressure went, like, up 30 points. <laughs> because... Literally because of the population. And I'm not naming names. I was harassed. Spit on. Spit upon. I wasn't spit on. They were spit around me. Cussed out my life. Standing there with baseball bats. And surround my car when I got out. From home from work. I wasn't on perpetual welfare. I got cut off because I went and turned myself in on a warrant. But I found out I had. Speaking of all the stuff about Trump. I had found out that I went to court, I went to court for something stupid in the 90s when my mom was dying. 
and they told me to come back with a lawyer. I didn't have a lawyer, I didn't have money, and I was homeless. I didn't get any mail. My brother was supposed to have all my mail. I didn't get any mail from that time, and I found out 15-something years, I don't even know later, 10 years later, that I had missed a date, and there was the warrant because of that, which I had turned myself in. They told me to come to court. I went to court. I didn't even know when the date was. partner snuck in. I studied 24-7 whenever I could. I fell asleep with the notes in my bed. I worked jobs this whole time. I had to study for board exams. I had kids sick. I had kids with growing pains. Kids that couldn't sleep at night. Kids that were hungry doing sit-ups on the gym floor. And I was going to food pantries all over Portland back when some of the ones on the east side let you go. The ones on the west side, you have to live in a certain address and you have to prove your address and prove everything. I stood in line. I got rotten meat, rotten dairy. I'm, I don't eat meat. I'm allergic to dairy. I'm allergic to corn. I'm allergic to... I don't eat pork. Me and my son were had an allergic reaction to pork. Cooking beef. As soon as I take it out of the package, my daughter said, That food is rotten. Do not eat it. Throw it away, Mom. I said, I can't. This is all I have. They said, Too bad. We're not eating it. It's rotten. My friend said, That's what you get when you're poor. You gotta learn to eat like that. And I'm going to school, going to Walmart, trying to get at least two outfits, a pair of slacks. I had ballooned up to 223 working out in martial arts three, four times a week, running on the track up at Portland State's gym that they used to have. And I was taking walks with my kids, taking my kids to park pretty much seven days a week, rain or shine, even if I was sick, because I was tired. I had zero. My I signed, tried to sign my partner up to do visitation. He did zero visitation, zero child support. I was alone. I have no relatives that talk to me. My dad used to talk to me sometime, and he swindled some money to try to get tax breaks from us, using us as dependents. I studied. I carried my books. I recorded my class. I recorded myself. I made study guides. I highlighted all the books. I got books from the library. I got... Uh, Dr. Neji, uh, anything that I could find, YouTube videos, I have learning dif differences. Nobody would study with me, like I said yesterday, because I was black and I was stupid looking. So I hired tutors through the school, the school paid for it, and that way I could speak and have someone do Q&A and flashcards with me. Because I used to do that with my kids until they got tired of it. I used to pay them to do it for five minutes, one dollar, you know, then they're like, no, we're not going to help you anymore. So when you don't have someone you can sit down and go over the notes and talk, it's not about I didn't learn it, it's about recalling it and being able to have a conversation about it, being able to have somebody help somebody, you help each other to pick out what looks like it's important. So I struggled, I struggled, I struggled. I had somebody recently tell me, you need to stop working for yourself and go work for another naturopath so you could figure out how to make money. I'm offended. I make money. They don't pay me. They make fun of my client. They pay me low. They know your race. They know what you're married or not. They know the insurance companies will pay this doctor a certain amount, this naturopath a certain amount, this naturopath. My clinic charged $150 for me for a 15-minute appointment, 20-minute appointment for me as a patient, nurse practitioner. They billed $150-something. The insurance, Medicaid, paid them $196. My degree is way up here. My specialties are way up here. And I'm getting paid $60, $80, luckily $90, plus a copay for an hour and a half. Not even 20 minutes. Uh, if I was a nurse practitioner, family nurse practitioner working at my, the clinic I'm a patient at, I'd be making $200 over 20 minutes, $600 an hour. Naturopath starts cash, five to $600, and some some um, holistic providers that aren't NDs, they are NDs or chiropractors, charge $3,000 an hour. Dietitians, $3,000 an hour. So I'm not going to go work for a naturopath that doesn't want to hire me because I'm black and fat and nappy. $35 an hour. 
I see the ads. We'll pay you $35 an hour. You need at least five years experience. You need to do IV therapy, do this, women's health, specialize, all this. You need to be able to see peds, do primary care. $35 an hour only when you see patients. You don't have patients for an hour, you don't get paid. But you just have to do stuff and sell supplements, which they receive all the profit. That's how they get rich, by exploiting people like me. So why not work for myself and actually do my billing? And when they don't pay the bill, a lot of times there's errors on their behalf. The AI does the checks. I'm noticing a lot of errors. Resubmit ASAP. Single mom goes to med school, pre med school, med school, graduate school, extra training in geriatrics, general health, and for all ages, and childbirthing, which is obstetrics. That's what I do. Homeopathy, all that, everything. Most naturopaths I know do not even do one tenth of what I do in my clinic, and they all get paid a lot more than me. They bleach their hair. They straighten their hair, they wear extensions, they do their nails, they get Botox. People pay for beauty. People watch videos because people are beautiful. I have very few views. I'm not a model. I used to want to be one. I wanted to be a different. I wanted to look different than all the models. I didn't want to look like a little Barbie. I want to look like me, Mia. I studied, I studied, I studied, I studied. I made flashcards, I wrote stuff up. I used the Wii and I lost 90 something pounds. Got on an exercise bike. And I made juice, dehydrated foods, and I cooked my kids meat, grass fed meat and organic stuff until I couldn't afford it, until it started adding junk to the organic milk. I studied a lot.